silk from Max Server Developers. Uh, and the source silk is, this is Remus Nielsen. I've already forgotten how to pronounce his colleague's mm -hmm. name. Oh. Owa? Owa. Owa, who uh, uh, is, I think they switched presenters. Uh, Jonas is from the Famous Geodata Agency. Uh, part of the Ministry of the Environment, we can talk about how they've migrated over to a different and they're using Max Server as part of that. Indeed, yes. Uh, well, mainly, uh, we, we do use Map Server. Uh, we'll be seeing that as well. Uh, mostly, uh, this talk is about um, our migration uh, of database backend systems uh, for our web services uh, from Oracle Spatial to PostGIS. Um, and yeah, so, uh, the Danish Geodata Agency is the Danish National Mapping and Cadastral Agency. Um, and we have a range of web services um, WMS, WFS, WCS, WMTS. Uh, this is mostly the WMS backend um, that this will uh, be about. Um, I'll talk to you a little about, uh, in the beginning, uh, the situation we came from and why that was no longer viable for us. Uh, what we did and did not do. Um, this is, uh, as it turns out, uh, quite a, well, I would say a somewhat focused use case uh, and reasonably simple as well, uh, it turned out. Uh, and some experiences we gathered along the way. Um, the situation uh, a few years back was that we had uh, what I would call a monolithic Oracle Spatial database doing pretty much everything because that was how uh, the agency was structured. Everything went into this one database to end all databases. Um, so all production systems, everything went through that database. Uh, it was also uh, the authoritative uh, data store and it was delivering data for web services as well. Uh, so pretty much everything was somehow interacting with each other uh, some of it interacting with nothing uh, in this great database. Uh, it was, and it still is, we still have it, uh, residing on the same, uh, there were several databases in it, as you can see, uh, on the same system, physical system. Uh, so that was a hard physical limit, uh, and there were some licensing, <coughs> licensing issues as well uh, that were somewhat limiting to us uh, more and more as time went by. Um, uh, and what we did, we had all this production flowing through it, and in the end, uh, there were database views created for web services distribution. And they were, well, increasingly complex uh, and not at all times performing as we would like. Uh, and what, what happened is basically this. I don't know how many of you went to a Messer's presentation yesterday morning. Um, he's my boss. He showed this one as well. Um, this is how many requests we serve per month. And in August, we were uh, just shy of 120 million, um, which this Oracle database <coughs> system was no longer able to, and it's not supplying this. Uh, I think uh, we made the change in 2011, was that somewhere around there? Um, which is here, uh, and at that point, uh, the Oracle database w was no longer scaling for us at all. Um, we saw uh, a, a big increase in data distribution uh, through our web services. It kept increasing. Uh, we were doing, well, pretty much just whatever we could, nurturing uh, this database, trying to push speed however we could. Um, at the same time, uh, a new database structure for, uh, for the cadastral data was implemented, uh, which was uh, not as simple as it might have been, uh, and that increased the complexity of the database views for the web services as well, uh, and did not make it any quicker. Um, we had uh, WFS requests going into the database as well. Uh, they were technically legal, uh, but very expensive to uh, <laughs> uh, to go through, uh, and we had at the time not 
no reasonable self-defense uh, mechanism. Uh, so that those WFS requests came in. Uh, the database was grinding through them. Uh, the production systems behind all that was not able to do any work in the database either because the database was pretty much in a, in a tar pit or deadlock uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, and as it was, we were not able to scale the bottleneck, which was most of the time the database, uh, because of the licensing costs. Uh, we were bound on the same physical hardware, uh, and the license was uh, prohibitively expensive, especially because this was exposed to the web. Uh, we could have done it possibly uh, if it wasn't, but the licensing is, uh, is a completely different story when it's exposed externally to the web. Uh, so that was just, well, we, we would not have had the money. Uh, <laughs> so something had to be done. Um, we have set up uh, some, some self-defense mechanism um, uh, in our front load balance that we call the switchboard. Um, where we do not allow as many WFS requests into our system. Uh, it's a re reasonably simple self-defense, uh, but along with the increased uh, capacity we have for, for delivering web services, it's, it's working quite well in day-to-day -day use. Uh, we moved the rosters for WMS services out of the database. For some reason, they went there as well. Um, have been taken out. And uh, we latched on a uh, PostGIS replica um, that we put in the chain after the Oracle database. Uh, and putting that in place uh, allowed us to trim the, the database structure as well, uh, flatten uh, the table structure and not be dependent on the views that were not, not performing. So what that looks like is pretty much this uh, reasonably simple model. We just basically latched on uh, this one. Uh, we still have this in place uh, and is, to be fair, working fine. Uh, we were just not able to scale it uh, as we would have liked. Um, but putting these in place, um, this was our first implementation of it, uh, we've gone th through a couple. Um, what we did here is uh, we used, uh, we have the Oracle database, OGR to OGR, to make uh, a nightly copy out to uh, PostGIS master database uh, and slave. And on the same machine, we have, uh, we had installed map server, um, based on the notion that the PostGIS database would probably be IO intensive and map server mostly CPU intensive. Uh, so we thought that's a good idea. Uh, and this was effective, I would say, very much so. Not in the long run so much efficient uh, as the overhead of, of managing all these databases. Well, mostly they take care of their own stuff, uh, but we still need to set it up and implement it, make it run. Um, so we have switched to what you could call a, a more traditional setup. Uh, we, we have the database behind, uh, the map server, we call the, those load servers, um, application servers out front. Um, so that allows us uh, as well to scale independently whatever doesn't perform uh, in our system uh, architecture. Uh, and it allows us to roll out what we usually have to do if there's some sort of a situation uh, where we need extra performance, extra capacity, we need to put in more load servers out front, uh, not necessarily more database machines. Uh, so having those load servers be as simple as possible uh, allows us to roll them out quicker and easier uh, uh, when they all do just drag from the same database store. Uh, it'll be a, a lot slower uh, having to roll out a machine that has to take a, a new dump of the data and be put up as a slave of the master database and have all that in sync uh, before the machine is, is, is live. Uh, so this rolls out a lot quicker. And this all worked out well. Yeah. Um, I, I did think of removing these numbers. They're, well, somewhat 
embarrassing, really. Um, <laughs> those are milliseconds on there, uh, for those who can see them. Um, and we do have zero at the bottom, so uh, it was bad. Um, this is when we changed it, uh, the end of December, um, some two, three years ago, uh, when we switched one of our services uh, to the new database backend. Uh, so that went from what seven to ten seconds uh, response time down to a couple of seconds, uh, which is still not lightning fast. It has gotten better since. Um, but well, also to be fair, um, as I put there, uh, the old database system was in need of constant nurturing, uh, which we didn't give it at the end because we were building this flashy new system. Uh, that we just wanted to get finished. Um, so, what we did not do uh, is to completely replace the Oracle Spatial Database, uh, which is still working fine for, for the rest of the organization and for us as well, really. Uh, so, what we did was just, yeah, just, uh, we, we put in uh, features that we could scale uh, the things that we needed to scale the most, um, uh, which was, at that point, uh, the database for data distribution. Uh, so the, the old database being offloaded with the task of uh, serving, servicing us with data is working very well still. And there are still things we would like to do. Um, some more advanced load balancing uh, of the PostGIS databases. Um, we've been looking into PG Pool. Um, on has anyone tried it? <laughs> you have. Uh, we were not immediately impressed with the performance of it. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm sure we'll be looking more into it, uh, but initial impressions were not that good, really. Uh, is that? You agree? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll look, in more to look into it more, I suppose. Uh, but it, we, yeah, we need, we do need it to perform. Uh, uh, for the time being, uh, for the load balancing, it's really simple. Uh, we mainly just uh, do it in the DNS system, uh, so which is just basically a simple round robin load balancing, if you can even call it that. Um, but the system has been running so well and so stable that we're not, we're not in a dire need of introducing uh, more advanced features. We still want them, uh, but there's no, no, no gun to our head. Uh, um, and introducing some sort of self-healing system. Again, the system has been running fine, so we, we are not dropping databases right and left uh, that we need to take care of. Um, but uh, to create as healthy a system as possible, that would be nice to have as well. Um, and now that Postgres does offer some features. Uh, so the experiences we had uh, can pretty much be summed up, I suppose, as along these lines. Um, we freed ourselves of, uh, of the Oracle Spatial licensing issue, uh, which was prohibitive. Um, we can install fresh databases as we need them, uh, which is very nice. Um, and uh, we were able to, in the process, to switch, well, in a controlled fashion at least, uh, to the new databases. Uh, some services uh, even ran from uh, multiple databases at once, both from Oracle and from PostGIS, um, for a short period. Uh, so we've been introducing it in reasonably small steps, uh, which I think is a very good idea as well, uh, and always being able to roll back if anything fails. Um, and uh, one of the other presenters I heard one of the other days who said he might be preaching um, to the converted, uh, which is, I suppose, this one goes there as well. Uh, it is a very mature database system, uh, so you shouldn't be afraid to use it. Uh, just get out there. We, we were not at all experts when we started this. Uh, so um, the, the project has probably run high on man hours put into it and low on uh, funds. Uh, 
as in money put into it. Um, uh, but it's been a good project. It's fun, really. Um, and uh, as well, along the way, um, we've learned that uh, Postgres is well fully functional, obviously. Uh, and uh, we would really not be afraid to put it into production use. Uh, we're not in a position to push it back necessarily into the rest of the organization. Uh, but uh, us who have worked with it would not be afraid of doing that as such. Uh, we, we do believe it, it's fully capable of, of doing that as well. Uh, but tearing out uh, a fully integrated production database system is, uh, is a big process. Um, and we're at the point that we are, um, we're considering uh, dumping backwards compatibility with, uh, with the Oracle Spatial Database because uh, we feel this system is running very fine as it is. And I'll leave you with this one um, that we are, I hope, not uh, unhumbly so, but somewhat proud of. Uh, it, the system is running quite smoothly. At the time, uh, we're serving about 5 to 10 percent of these requests uh, daily uh, from the PostGIS system. So that's three to 400,000 uh, requests a day that comes through the system, um, um, which it is. The rest, the rest is mostly uh, WMTS and WMS from Rust or data sources. Uh, we have some uh, of our in-house made, we call them geo keys as well. Uh, they take up some of it. Uh, but mostly WMS and WMTS um, is all the rest. And that was in competition with the lunch. Yeah, well sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Plenty of time for questions. Uh, well, it isn't. Uh, yeah, the question is, uh, what product is the switchboard? The switchboard is a Java component that we have built in-house. Uh, but you can talk to Measure two rows behind you if you'd like. Uh, she's the master of the switchboard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the question is, did we run into problems with the OGR to OGR? Uh, conversion, yeah. Um, smaller things, I would say. Um, there are, that's, yeah, a message I want to get across as well. You will probably hit bumps on the road, but we have had no showstoppers at all. Uh, there are things we have uh, a field from the Oracle database with so many characters in it. When it goes through OGR to OGR, it somehow forces the same field length actively uh, in the PostGIS database, meaning it'll just fill out with zeros or blanks unless we do character conversion or data type conversion through the OGR to OGR. Um, so along those lines, um, but no showstoppers uh, that we've seen. Uh, but yeah, you will spend time doing some nitty gritty stuff, that's for sure. Yeah. So maybe you don't want to do a complete nightly dump uh, from, from your database. Uh, we do have one, one of our WMS services as well. Where, uh, I don't know, the, the, the data is odd somehow. We do a dump to a shapefile uh, and then use that you know, for map server in one of our services. It's just one particular layer uh, that was taking up more than half the time for that particular service. Uh, but the dump to a shapefile from PostGIS goes really quick uh, and map server services really quick. But taking it from PostGIS is just somehow a bit slow. Uh, so we've worked around that uh, in a pragmatic fashion.
take this step, or did you just show them what was happening and you just go to and say, look, this is what we want to do? Well, it was obvious to uh, the whole organization that the database, uh, the Oracle Spatial Database, was no longer up to the task. Uh, and everybody could see up front what it would cost to scale the license and the hardware. Uh, so something else had to be done. Uh, so there was support for it uh, in the organization. So. I reckon the answer is, from above, is we'll throw more money at it. And I don't understand open source is going to do it. No, yeah, but yeah, there was an understanding uh, and, well, uh, a, a common feeling that this could do the job. Uh, and if we were to scale on the Oracle database, it would have probably scaled uh, pretty much linearly with uh, spending, which, uh, yeah, which is not going to work in the long run. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we had to do something else. Uh. Well, I don't know. I, I didn't see him. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think yeah, we still pay a reasonable amount of money, so I think he's doing all right. Probably. Okay. We've still got two of our speakers here. I think we've, we've lost the other two. So let's just thank these two, and we'll clap as loud as the others can hear again.